Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. Planned Parenthood can no longer treat women as an assembly line commodity in South Dakota. I'm Matt Barber, Vice President of Liberty Council Action and Associate Dean with Liberty University School of Law, in for Matt Staver today. And joining me in studio is Sean Akers, Dean of Liberty's Helm School of Government and Policy Analyst with Liberty Council. Well, Sean, a uh, 72-hour wait and counseling bill uh, before an abortion uh, it has passed in the state legislature in South Dakota, House Bill 1217 requires women seeking an abortion to wait 72 hours and undergo counseling with a licensed physician before having the abortion. This will be the longest wait time in the nation, and I hope and pray that it will uh, set the table uh, for other states to follow suit. The bill is now sitting on the desk of Governor Dennis Dalgard, and the law is designed to allow time for women thinking about having an abortion Uh, It's to to provide them the material to make informed choices and to prevent them from being coerced into having an unwanted abortion. And, Sean, you know, in in the the medical uh, community, there's a thing called informed consent. People are required, you know, if somebody goes in for a procedure for an operation on a a gallbladder or their heart or, you know, any any, uh, regular kind of common uh, procedure... They are, doctors will explain to them in detail the, the bad that can go wrong, the good that can come out of it. Uh, they're given all the possibilities. It's called informed consent. Then they can give their consent to undergo the procedure with a full knowledge and understanding of what is about to occur. Well, f- from the time of Roe v. Wade in 1973, the abortion industry has done everything that it possibly can to cover up what really occurs during an abortion. Planned Parenthood and, and other organizations will obfuscate and and try to keep information out of the hands of women, uh, so they really perpetuate uh, ill-informed or simply uninformed uh, consent. They just want the women to come forward, have the abortion, fork over their $500 or whatever it costs, and, and move forward and run the net, run them out and the next one in, uh, like an assembly line. This bill is, is an important step in the right direction so that women can, uh, this em- emboldens women to have a full understanding that what the procedure they are actually about to undergo actually takes the life of a child and places them at, at risk in terms of enhanced uh, chances of breast cancer and certainly even uh, up to and including uh, death from an abortion procedure. You know, Matt, this is a this is a good bill. We hope that the governor will sign it very very soon because I, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, the the best analogy here is probably one that we can all identify with, Matt. We've all been to. Um, a car lot or a used car lot occasionally and I'll tell you you know you always get a little nervous when somebody wants you to sign on the dotted line before you have a chance to think about it and there's a reason for that there's something in us that says you know something's not right here you mentioned informed consent but this is this is a very real thing thousands and thousands of women around the United States right now suffer from having made a quick decision that took the life of a baby and they have to live with that the rest of their lives all this bill is asking is 70 two hours for them to get some counseling and actually think about this and and know what they're doing before they they do it now how many of us wish on something as as low impact as buying a car that we had had that time to think about it rather than somebody Mm -hmm. pushing you to sign on the dotted line right now the reason they want you to sign on the dotted line right now is because they want you to do something without having had the time to fully think it through and examine your options because they know if you leave that lot you're probably going to have time to make a much more informed decision and there may be something much better for you out there a much better option than the one that you're being pushed into making right now planned parenthood has used as a wedge as an absolute lever to cause 
the abortions of thousands and thousands of children this ability to not have hardly any time with a doctor, not even the doctor performing the abortion. You, you've got a couple of, of uh, abortion clinic employees that run you through that, that push you into this decision mm-hmm. that, uh, that give you very little time to change your mind. And before you realize what's done, you're signing the consent form while you're, while you're in the room about to have the abortion. Well, all, yeah. Uh, yeah, and all this is asking is that you get a chance to stop and think about it before you do it. And it's, and it's not just their, their strategy is, is not one that is just a, a policy of trying to rush them through, which they certainly do. It's uh, to, to rush them through before they have a chance to gather information and to, to have enough information to actually uh, offer to provide informed consent. Um, well, in, in South Dakota, for instance, and, and this is why certainly this law was necessary in South Dakota. I, I think it's necessary in every state um, uh, as a an incremental step toward protecting innocent human life. This is just one uh, potential air, arrow in the quiver. Of course, ultimately, all abortion is wrong. Uh, all abortion takes the life of a human being. It is homicide in every instance. Uh, but uh, this at least is one step that I think will will diminish the numbers of abortions that are occurring as women truly understand what they're going through. In South Dakota, all abortions currently are done by out-of-state doctors who usually fly in on a Monday morning. They're paid on the number of abortions they complete, so they have an incentive to to uh, kill as many babies as they possibly can. Then they fly out that evening. Uh, the doctor only spends about five to seven minutes total, Sean, with each woman. This is, th- these are life and death decisions we're talking about here. Five to seven minutes. He meets them for the first time only after the woman has undressed for the abortion. So she's already committed. I mean, they want to make it as uncomfortable as possible for a woman to change her mind. Uh, they, you're all in. And then women who come to the clinic are required to sign a consent form for the abortion and even pay for the procedure as a precondition for even seeing this so-called patient educator for counseling. The educators are untrained, uncertified, unable to counsel women about, uh, quote, about fetal development or other counseling issues. And, Sean, obviously these women are are what they are is they're pro-abortion activists that are in there to to talk these women into having having an abortion, not to giving not to uh, give them an objective understanding, so that they can can uh, decide whether or not to uh, give informed consent. They've already given their consent. This is just a yeah yeah wink nod nod. You're doing the right thing here. Five to seven minutes. You're undressed. Here comes our out of state doctor. Boom. Uh, it, it it's un- unconscionable what they do. You know, Matt, and there's something more to it. Even even more than uh, clinical objectivity, which they deny these women. They deny them the very ability just to even even do the the cost benefit analysis. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about human life here. And I'll tell you, here's what bothers me the most about it, Matt, is one of the first things that anyone learns in hostage negotiation or anything like that is that if you're ever in a hostage situation, what you want to do, if at all possible, is to introduce yourself, to humanize yourself to the hostage taker. Because if that hostage taker ever sees you as a person, as an individual, it's going to be infinitely more difficult for them to commit the crime. Mm -hmm. And these people know in these abortion clinics that you cannot allow that mother to get to know her baby. Mm -hmm. You cannot allow that introduction to be made. If you give her 72 hours to really think about what she's going to do, maybe to get one of these 3D or 4D Mm -hmm. ultrasounds and see that little baby sucking on that little thumb, that there's already a relationship there. If you have 72 hours to think about that, you're not very likely, you're not going to do this thing. In the real world, we know that all but the the hardest, most psychopathic criminals are going to have trouble committing that crime with a, in a hostage situation once you personalize yourself to them. That's really what I think is at the root of this. It needs to be not just in South Dakota, but in every one of the states until abortion is outlawed on, on its face mm-hmm. because these are human lives. Women should be, I think, absolutely absolutely required to look into the eyes of those babies before they make that decision. That's all this bill does is give them that opportunity. Boy, Sean, I like your analogy of, of a hostage situation. Unfortunately, though, with, with the scenario in South Dakota and across the country, uh, it's this uh, 
situation here with with abortion and and the counseling and so forth that occurs through Planned Parenthood is worse than a hostage situation because in every instance somebody dies. At least with a hostage hostage situation, sometimes the hostages uh, are freed. the The goal of Planned Parenthood in in fighting this legislation is to ensure that somebody dies in every instance. Well, folks, uh, the good news is that we have a sovereign God that is moving in this country, is moving in states like South Dakota to help equip women to make the right decision, to decide on on the side of life and, and to uh, steer away from this culture of death. That's what we're doing at Liberty Council. We will support this legislation. We will support similar legislation across the country. Go to lc.org to learn how you can become part of Liberty Council's Ministry for Life. <music> You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.